Hey everyone, I'm Molly Wood and welcome to the Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everyone is talking about. This week, iPhones on the loose, a high five and a what what for the Department of Justice, and when there's no more room in tech hell, the dead will walk the earth. But let's begin with the gadget of the week. The gadget of the week is the Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. Yes. It was announced this week for AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint, where it will be known simply as the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. Anyway, the Samsung Galaxy 2 Epic 4G Touch pod pad has a 4G support, 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, a rear-facing 8 megapixel camera that takes HD video, a 10% bigger battery, and a Super AMOLED touchscreen. Plus, the Samsung Galaxy 2 Epic 4G Touch 3D Hurricane will run the latest version of Gingerbread with Samsung's custom TouchWiz interface on it, and it will include a bunch of new enterprise features, the ability to connect to your computer and other devices over Wi-Fi for like wireless transferring and texting, more voice command support, and you can even take screenshots on the phone. Finally, awesome! The Samsung Galaxy 2 Epic 4G Touch Hypnotized Fire Dancer Flying Squirrel Honey Badger has almost as many features as it has words in its name. And now for the news. Top story of the week, the U.S. Justice Department also hates AT&T. Or at least it hates the idea of the AT&T T-Mobile merger, just like the rest of us. The DOJ filed a lawsuit this week to block the proposed $39 billion merger. The agency said that merger would substantially damage wireless competition, it would lead to higher prices, worse service, and less innovation, especially in rural areas and for low-income customers. And the DOJ gave a nice little present to T-Mobile, saying that they had been totally good for competition because they're innovative and spunky and they had the first Android phone and the first high-speed data network. Man, it's almost like the DOJ has been listening in on our conversations about the merger and reading our tweets and emails and stuff. And just this one time, I'm totally cool with that. But do not call this story over, not by a long shot, because don't forget, if this merger doesn't go through, AT&T has to pay T-Mobile $3 billion in cash, plus Spectrum and Airwaves deals that add up to a total breakup package of about $7 billion. So don't look for AT&T to go away quietly. I mean, when do they ever? In other top news this week, apparently another iPhone prototype was left in a bar. This time in San Francisco. No, I'm not joking. We have no idea if it was an iPhone 5 prototype or some other iPhone, what version of iOS it was running, or any other specs. We only know that it was taken from a Mexican restaurant and bar. It might have been sold on Craigslist for $200. And when the police tried the Find My iPhone feature on it, they tracked it to a house, searched the place, and couldn't find it. And then the guy who lived there said he didn't know anything about it, even when Apple employees reportedly offered him cash on the spot for the phone back, no questions asked. <laughs> I love this story. And it kind of just goes to show that Apple employees are human too. I mean, they get wasted and lose their phones and bars just like the rest of us. Does anyone have an ad bill or my phone? I need my phone. Also this week, the HP touchpad, tablet or zombie. After HP sold thousands, hundreds of thousands of touchpads in a $99 fire sale earlier this month, the company announced it will manufacture just a few more touchpads and sell them for the same price, except at retail stores where they can price it whatever they want. And then after that, though, then WebOS and the tablets are dead for real. Except that there's a software update coming for WebOS for all you new touchpad owners, so it'll get better. And then, of course, there were rumors that Samsung might buy WebOS. And then you have the executive vice president of HP's PC group, which may or may not get spun off, telling the press that, sure, HP might totally get back into the tablet game. All I know is, this time, I'm getting one of those $99 touchpads. And I really hope it doesn't eat my brain the way it apparently ate Leo Apotheker's brain. And finally, speaking of doom, let's have a look at what's clogging the tubes. The Cornell Creative Machines Lab posted this video on YouTube that they say is what happened when they hooked an artificial intelligence chatbot up to itself and then let it have a conversation with itself. Prepare to panic. I am a robot. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. 
I'm a unicorn. What is God to you? Not everything. Not everything could also be something. For example, not everything could be half of something, which is still something, and therefore not nothing. Very true. I would like to imagine it is. But you say you are not helpful, therefore you are a meaning. Why you say it ought to? That does not make sense. Don't you want to have a body? Sure. Or if what? You should really go watch the whole video at YouTube, but I think the first commenter there pretty much nailed it. Quote, so when you let robots talk to each other, they instantly identify their own kind, start discussing God and their wish to have physical bodies. Yeah, let's not do this again. End quote. And that's the Buzz Report for this week, everyone. I'm Molly Wood, and thank you for watching. Can we go full, this, this, this feels like it should be a Ron Burgundy moment, like, can we go full screen on some hayseeds so I can just do a pickup? <laughs>